Hey everyone, this is Steve Weintraub. I'm here in the Collider South by Southwest studio with the fine folks behind Magpie. Uh, I really want to start with congratulations on your movie. I know audiences are going to love it and they're I was going to say something spoilery, but I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to say I think audiences are going to have a really good time with it. Um, so uh, no one will have seen it yet. So who wants to be the person who gets uh, a little screwed and has to do what it's about? <laughs> Sam. Sam. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Magpie is about uh, a married couple. Uh, played by Daisy and Shazad. They have a daughter who is uh, chaperoned. She's an actor and she's chaperoned to a film set by Shazad's character. Uh, on that film set is Matilda's character, who is a very famous movie star making a film. Um, and while Annette is left at home with the baby, kind of struggling to stay sane, this man over here starts a relationship with this woman here. And uh, the film is about what happens. One of the things that the film does very well is keeping the audience off balance. And so can you sort of talk about that aspect of, you know what I mean, it's hard to do, but you guys managed to do it. I mean, one of the things we did discuss is perception. Obviously, everyone's going to come into a film and have their own perceptions about uh, the characters that we're all playing. Um, particularly, I would say, Matilda's character, um, someone who lives their life in the public eye um, but has something awful happen to them. But then if you're in the public eye, should you not expect it? And all that sort of stuff. So those perceptions and challenging them. And we also uh, see things slightly differently, probably a third of the way through. So yes, you start seeing characters' intentions and uh, why they're doing the things they do differently. And you start going, oh, 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 okay. Terrible answer. Okay. <laughs> well, the problem is like, this is one of these interviews where, and I think people realize who are watching, it's like you're talking about a movie, but you really can't get into the meat and potatoes of it because you're going to spoil it for, you know, for people. So um, I, I know this, this was generated by an idea that you came up with and then worked with Tom. Talk a little bit about that genesis. Well, the original um, story was following the actress because I had worked with a little girl on a film and she knew the difference between me and her mother, but she called me mummy on set and she was six. And I was like, this must be so confusing for a child. And like the romance of being on set and movie making, all of that excitement. So the initial idea was um, an actress that usurps, tries to sort of get into the family. And then when we had discussed and Tom was running with the idea, um, it felt uh, very engaging to be more with Annette, more with the woman who doesn't have the excitement of a new thing, who isn't able to go to the fun workplace until she facilitates herself going to the fun workplace. Yeah, and um, you know, you talk about the perception and we can't really talk too much about what happens in the film without spoiling it. Uh, but really the film narrative does follow Daisy's sort of original idea that there's a man bringing his kid onto a set and, and starts to fall for a, a, a movie star. But while I was writing it, I started to get really fascinated by this woman left at home, keeping everything together, this power and strength that it would take to hold this family unit together. And then once that starts to crumble, where does it go? Where does her power and energy go? Um, and all along, I just wanted to kind of wrong for an audience and, and challenge a sort of perception of you think you know this setup and let's sort of like start to shift that around and see what happens when you play with it. Um, yeah, and that's all I can really say without spoiling the film. So for this is for everyone. Um, uh, a lot of people watching this interview know how movies are made. They're a really smart audience. So for each of you, what do you think would surprise uh, people who are watching this to learn about the making of Magpie? Good question. Um, and everyone, please use a mic as you talk. Well, I, I would say one of the interesting things was well, that they might be surprised about is that we that we spent we, we sort we sort of followed the pattern of the way the movie goes in a sense, so that me and Daisy spent two weeks in in the house, mm. being very intense, being very cold to each other, and then as the movie sort of, I start to visit and go, go to the set and. Then we do two weeks on, on. We did two weeks on. Where was it? Where where were we? I don't even. Uh, Scion House. Scion House somewhere. You know, yeah, West London. it just sort of followed the pattern of. It's quite nice to film like that because not, not often. Oftentimes you don't really get to 
have a really intense experience and then sort of follow the way the character's brain's going. I don't know if that makes sense, but mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. I think a lot of people realize that things are usually filmed out of order. Mm -hmm. And when you can film everything together, it, mm -hmm. it must be really nice. Yeah. yeah. And I was just thinking about the, the the real world of it all. So while we were shooting, quite a lot, and won't name them, people on set would come up and go, oh, well, this is happening to me at the moment, or my friend has happened. And you know, you have this movie world, and then this interaction with the real world, and everyone, start, as it went on, started to relate to a different character and started to bring that up on set. And it was kind of all therapeutic in this like constant uh, release of information mm -hmm. about someone they knew, whoever that was. Mm -hmm. Also, I think as uh, Daisy and I, it was our first uh, thing that we had made together and producing something and making it from the ground up, I was fascinated by just how many stages of discovery there are during the filming process. Even on set, mm -hmm. Sam and Laura, our amazing DOP, working out ways to tell certain aspects um, and themes of the story really creatively and just watching them grow and learn and evolve during the shooting process. And that continued through the editing process, the music process. How can we sort of layer these textures into the film, which I just found fascinating getting a front row seat to, to go, oh my God, watch these people collaborate, bring their ideas and create in front of you instead of a finished product on the script. It, it never stopped being a creative process. I think like what's, what's for me was very fun to do on set is that I'm not gonna spoil it, but I was allowed with Sam uh, and Shazad um, to like explore different nuances and and play the character in different ways. Um, and also what I really love about it is that uh, we're so quick to judge nowadays, uh, especially like, you know, actors and public personas. Um, and during the whole film, we shift from like one judgment to another for all characters. Uh, which I think is really interesting. I think something for me that was like personally surprising, because this is my first feature, uh, but it won't ne necessarily be surprising for other people, is that you, you do so much insane planning for a film, obviously, and everything's in place, and then you turn up and the camera's there, and then your actor is there, right? So suddenly the actor steps in front of the camera and you roll on the first take, and that to me was like, holy shit. I was like <laughs> seeing kind of movie star presence, movie star intensity was really exciting. And that's when everything kind of fell into place, you know? So that was definitely like a cool surprise moment for me just going, wow, like actors are the special effects of the movie world, do you know what I mean? So that was, that was my surprise. I would say, um, something that people are often surprised by is how um, some films take so long to film and you film such a short amount every day. Um, and I had this on Sometimes I Think About Dying, but there's also a wonderful intensity of filming more quickly. Um, so I think it's like the opposite of the surprise because this time I, I would say we, we, yeah, we were very contained and we had a lot to do, but we knew we could do it. So there was like a wonderful... Um, opposite to some other films that take a little longer. This is a terrible answer, but it's, uh, yeah. No, but it's, you're right, the intense, by, yeah. by kind of pushing everything together and having these intense days, mm -hmm. it meant the intensity between the actors and the energy, you know, the, stays, the energy stays, stays there because yeah. you are all, there's no downtime. It's not like shooting a film where you know, you're slowly moving the camera to another place. You are all on it all the time. And at the end of the day, everyone's like, Whoa, done it. Yeah, there we go. We had our own special like Godfather thing going on, you know, where everyone kind of was at the complex and Godfather part one and they were all living there and eating there <laughs> And everything. It was like a kind of warm family before it all fell apart. And for us, we had this really intense section in the house where Shazad and Daisy's characters and the, the kids, but it was gray, it was wintry, it was intense, it yeah. was claustrophobic, there was cameras everywhere. Everyone was getting on each other's nerves by the end. It was Christmas like really- Christmas coffee. Christmas and coffee, it was like grotty and cold. And then, and then in the second week, this is for Shazad who then transitions into the movie world. We're in this like amazing location, this space, the sun was shining, it was like yeah. freedom. So in a way like, uh, yeah, we had our own kind of immersive thing going on for sure. I'm gonna throw the curveball into the interview now. We, we have a lot of people coming into our studio and we're gonna ask all my interviews, I'm asking this question of everyone. It's gonna be a super cut when it's all said and done. Right. So I'm curious of your answers. Uh, and it is a curveball. If you could only watch one TV show for the rest of your life, what TV show would it be and why? 
Oh. I'm going to just come in and say friends very quickly. Oh. I would say there are so many seasons, so there's lots of variety. Generally joyful to put on. Yeah. That's really unfair because friends is the one thing that every, all of us have watched more than once, I think. Yeah. I might go Eastbound and Down. Oh, or no. Just, or X Files, either, either oh, or. Oh, sure. interesting. Yeah, yeah. But maybe not the last season or not two. Not the last season. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I'd say The Sopranos because I have gone back and revisited and uh, without sounding like a sort of film nerd, you discover new things on that. And that show is, I think, I, I still can't find a bum note on it. It's just amazing. So I'd say The Sopranos. I don't really watch TV shows, <laughs> but I started one and I'm really liking This Is Us. Thank you. Oh, nice. I wasn't sure what the answer was going to be. I'm like, okay, there we go. <laughs> I'm still thinking yeah. it's, it's an impossible, it's an impossible question. I, I, question. Yeah, I think with Sopranos is probably. I remember the the mic. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I think for me, I know, that, but, we've know. had this whole Tom, but I would say the Sopranos, yeah. because of the depth you can go into and keep watching and watching. Well, I can come around to yours and watch it. So yeah, we can all watch it together. We'll all we'll, we'll just sit there. Go I on, think um, major comfort for me is a, a show called The Darling Buds of May. Oh. Which is, oh, which is me, me and my fiance Charlie absolutely love it. It's uh, set in like, it's like they, it's this family, they eat loads of food. It's just like so charming. And you can kind of watch it again, you forget, and then you just enjoy it all over Sweet. again. Jason it's like Jason innocent. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We always oh, watch it with Jason, our parents oh, sure. as children. Catherine Zeta Jones was her first role. I it was proper TV where you sat down with your parents, you watched it after, you know, it was like yeah. when you didn't couldn't stream back in sure. those days. Wholesome. Who did you show it to who gave you the best notes on the edit that you're like, oh, F, we need to adjust that? Maybe that didn't happen, but I'm curious if, you know. That actually didn't really happen. We felt um, Sam and Chris, our amazing editor, were done really quickly with we the first. Weeks, yeah. The first, yeah. And then we came in, Kate, Tom and I, <clears throat> and we felt really good with the film. And we were like, oh, is it just us? So when we showed it, I think it was great because at the end of it, we were like, oh, okay. Like we felt good about this and other people like it. And what was amazing, we did a Q&A and it was all sorts of people from all different walks of life. Everyone had such different feelings about it, which was also amazing yeah. because everyone's coming in with a different story, you know? Um, so there were a few things that came up generally, um, uh, but otherwise. No, it I was think, and also we showed it just before that audience screen to our financiers align. Yeah. And it was so nice. It's hardly ever you have a financier screening where they're like, great, we love it. Yeah. You're like, what? Yeah. Where are the notes? Yeah. It was actually super relief, wasn't it? That was yeah. great. And then I think sometimes like a good note generally, whether someone gave it to us or not, is like, don't underestimate the audience. Like mm. they can watch something in as much detail as you care to, you know, so in there. So I think that was a good one. Like later on when we were kind of really fine tuning going, maybe we actually just don't need that. We don't have to like dollop that in front of people. Mm. How, how, how much can you take away? Because I think there's an interesting space in what you're not shown. You start to try and figure it out. And that might lead to those qualities of like something being unstable or like, mm. Or, or that's what keeps you watching. That's a good question for any edit. It's like, why, what keeps you watching? Mm. One of the things I'm curious about is, I would imagine, and I'm guessing at this, that like men and women might watch this movie differently. Absolutely. So what is it, what was it like after you started showing it to people and did you notice that men were saying different things than women? They used to talk about that guy. Which one? <laughs> the one who was Paul like, Ben. Paul ben. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So in the film, um, Ben, I mean, to be honest, so is it, but Ben is, has a uh, questionable uh, moral characteristics. Yeah. Um, and yes, yeah, someone, someone did watch and generally the audience were like, great. And actually, yeah, it was that screening and he goes, poor Ben, poor <laughs> Ben. And in a way I was like, fair enough. Like people again are coming in and, and Ben has a difficult time as does Annette. He just chooses to go about his difficulties in a different way. Uh, but yeah, he felt really bad for him. <laughs> there, was, there was another as well, actually, that I remember I think one of our screenings, early screenings to gauge a sort of audience's reaction. And there was a sort of almost criticizing of Annette's character too, which I loved because I never wanted any of these characters to be wholly good or wholly bad. Um, and my one fear was particularly with a, you put a protagonist in the middle there that an audience does go, well, we side with the protagonist. And what I loved was these discussions that came up where they just went, I mean, she does some pretty messed up stuff. Like she herself is not, she's complicit in whatever's going on here. And um, 
Uh, and that made me really happy because I thought actually there's more texture to it than just person in the middle mm. getting treated a certain way and, 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 and responding to that, that you actually think there are certain things she did that are questionable too. Mm. Before I run out of time, I have some individual questions and I would like to start with you, Tom, if you don't mind. Sure. I read that you have a twin brother mm. who doesn't act or maybe he's acted a little, I don't know. And I'm just curious, like, it seems like a ripe opportunity to play like twins in a movie or do something with your brother and, and fuck with the audience. Do you know what we, so his, his name's Merlin. He's amazing. We're not actually identical, but he had, we've acted together. We did an amateur dramatics production of the Comedy of Errors, Shakespeare's Comedy of Errors, and we played the two twins. He was fucking great. He was really good. Like, you know, he was, and I was at drama school at the time. I was like, this guy's got something. Um, but it would be really fun. It would be really fun, wouldn't it? Like you're talking about yourself a little bit. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I'm like, is this a mirror or is it? Yeah, no. Uh, um, but he was really, he was honestly, he was really good and he loved it and, and kind of wanted to do more. So maybe that could be Magpie 2, <laughs> the twins. No, but I mean, like so many, because you don't need VF, well, I mean, maybe a little VFX, but like, you, you know? I just think there's a ripe opportunity, yeah. you know, just throwing that out there. He does actually, my twin does appear as an extra in Murder on the Orient yeah. Express, him and his wife. Yeah, if you look closely when my character and uh, Poirot are getting onto the train, he's in there. Yeah. He appears. We, we, yeah, he's, he's there. He's there. I definitely want to talk about uh, uh, Captain Nemo uh, and the fact that, like, uh, for people that don't realize, it was at Disney Plus and now it's going to, it, and it was part... There's a lot of effed up stuff going on in Hollywood, <laughs> but, but now it's coming out on AMC and I'm super thankful. What was it like playing that role and what can you tease about the series? I mean, yeah, it's a full on, you know, action adventure epic, you, you know, a lot of time spent in the tank in Australia, uh, a lot of time in the water. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an Indian prince who, who steals a big submarine and, and fights the English. That's basically like but over 10 apps, you know, it's like a huge, huge show. Um, yeah, it was a great character to play because it hadn't been played other than, the, you know, since the James Mason one in, in this way. It hasn't been done in this way at all. Um, there's been some few TV versions or whatever, but um, yeah, I'm very excited for people to see it finally, hopefully. Do you know when it's actually coming out? I'm not sure on the release date, but early next year, I'm assuming. Yeah. Oh, so it's still like, it's one of those th the things that needs like, uh, when when did you rap on it? I actually don't a know. A long time, a while ago. Yeah, oh, yeah. So so yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah how, how, would you compare it to any of the current things that are on TV, or is it like its own unique um, thing? I mean, there's like ten brown guys on the ship, so I don't think there's many shows with that. Like, I don't know. I mean, it's like it's it's a lot of you know some stuff you haven't seen seen before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, listen, I'm legitimately super excited, and when yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's just messed up with so much of what's going on in Hollywood and things just getting sort of canceled that have been shot, it's really disturbing, mm. you know? And it, 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 I feel so terrible for the artists that were involved mm. and I'm so thankful that your show is getting a home at AMC. Yeah, well, I think, yeah, the AMC guy was a big fan of Jewel Verne stuff anyway, and they were they were actually developing it around the same time. So he's he was pretty excited, so I'm looking forward to it, yeah. There's an individual question for you. I'm, I'm gonna pass over if you don't mind. Um, so uh, I'm obviously very curious about Red Sonja. I'm sure you've been asked this, but like, what can you tease about the project? Cause I'm hoping I get to see it this year. What, what can you say? Um, it was a great experience. Uh, the, the prep and stunt rehearsals and horseback riding, things that I hadn't done before. So the whole process of prepping was amazing. Working with MJ as a director was incredible um, and what I think is different from what we know of Red Sony is that it was very the comics as well was like very male gaze oriented and this is a completely different story it's uh, a, a very empowered woman uh, and that's what I loved about the story I don't know yet when it's coming out uh, but I'm very excited to see it I haven't seen anything yet <laughs> I, I obviously I'm gonna take a wild stab that you probably wear the costume at some point in the movie so what is it like putting on uh, like an iconic costume out of a comic book uh, I mean, it was the thing, you know, like even in like costumes rehearsals and like uh, building the whole costume was like, I felt very exposed, but what I love about it is that the bikini is used in a completely different way um, from like the comics. So I'm excited to see what the audience is gonna 
thing. Yeah, and, and I don't mean to, I'm going to do one more on that, but like, what is it like though, before you sign on, do you sort of like get, like, do you have that conversation, like just to let you know, like this costume's a really big part of the, the project? Do you know what I mean? Or do you not really talk about that? Uh, it was already in the script that the costume was going to use not as like an exposure kind of like element, but in a different way. I don't want to spoil it, totally. but in a different way. So I, I felt like good enough to like wear something that was uh, used for a purpose and also like I just really connected with MJ the director so uh, we always talked about like how I was feeling and you know like when we built the costume in the costume like prep process it was always like how do you feel about this how do you feel about that so we we built it together so I always felt like I was part of the process and not like just oh you gotta wear this and you know Sure. Bye. No. It, it was like hard to do because like this, like one of the major scene is like in an arena with lots of extras <laughs> and I'm like fighting a monster <laughs> in a bikini. So that was like, <laughs> you know, that was like hard to do. But I feel like after like the first hour I was wearing it, I was just so comfortable in like being around people <laughs> and seeing me like, you know, fight in a bikini, that was fine. Uh, I have a question for you. You probably know what it's gonna be. What was it like working with Martin Campbell? Oh my God. It was, <laughs> it was a curveball. You didn't expect that. <laughs> nice. It was great. Right. Yeah, I'm a, I mean, coming into it, we, had, we were actually like re-watching his films as I was filming. Casino Royale, GoldenEye, Mask of Zorro. I mean like, iconic films and I feel like his sensibility runs through Cleaner so much like you should, you should tell people what it's about for people that don't realize uh, so Cleaner is about a woman me who is a window cleaner and is outside um, a building cleaning some windows and um, everything sort of gets a little strange inside the building and basically some eco activists have stormed the building and have some terms to be uh, met and it just so happens that my character knows MMA <laughs> and, and knows how to shoot. Um, so, so my character gets in touch with the police and I have to fight my way in, fight with the bad guys. It was really uh, intense. It's funny because I'm mid shooting something now, which is like, yeah, a few takes <clears throat> onwards. Like Martin is a real perfectionist and it was amazing. Like one of his notes was, just didn't feel it that time, try again. And you're like, okay. <laughs> Um, but it's, it, there's always humor in his films, obviously amazing action, but it was so, it's like a classic action movie, but emotionally it was amazing, like a real exploration. The guy that plays my brother is called Matt. He's amazing, never acted in anything before. And really my character's motivation is getting to her brother who she has done wrong by. Uh, so it's very, in amongst all this craziness, it's very beautiful coming together of these siblings. One of the things about Martin and his work, and because I've watched all of it, is his action is very stylistic. Mm. And what, you've obviously done action before, mm. but what was unique about the role in terms of pushing you as an actor that mm. maybe you haven't done before? I would say this is probably the toughest action I've done. When we came to, I have a fight with, uh, well, I have two big fights. And it was interesting because we were trying to research really good female action, like women fighting women. And it's not that easy to come by. Like Atomic Blonde is a is a good recent one. And there are bits and bobs, but we, uh, the intention of the stunt team and Martin and me was that the fights would be brutal. Like just as brutal between me and the woman I fight and then between me and the guy I fight. Um, <coughs> so it was, uh, it was, it was tough. But because I've done other action stuff, you know that you've just got that bit inside you. You're like, I think I can't do it again, but I can sure. and I shall. Mm. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I believe there's a first cut happening currently and people are watching it. Um, yeah, it was really, like he is amazing. And strangely, he reminds me of my dad. So I was like, Martin. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I just got to ask you real fast, and you know I'm going to ask about this. We all, she's part of this franchise called Star Wars. <laughs> it's not popular, but there's a few people that like it. Um, so there's there's talk that the the film that you guys are going to do is called New Jedi Order. Is that is that actually what it's called, or is this like? I don't know. Right? <laughs> I mean, I think so. That, I, I, was, honestly, that was announced. I, I, listen, I've seen it online a bunch, yeah. and I'm like, I think so. But you know, you know the way it is over there. Things yeah. change. Yeah, I mean, from the announcement, I, I don't think that's changed. 
uh, I know a script is happening and I'm going to be reading it imminently, which is very exciting. <clears throat> Do you think that there's a chance that it is filming at some point this year? Have they actually said, Daisy, we want you to save some dates? Or is it one of these things where it could be this year, it could be next year? You don't. Uh, I think it could be this year. Because there, I read that it, it was going to film later this year, but I don't know if that's true. It could be. But I'm not sure. I think, to be honest, the writer's strike has obviously delayed quite a lot of things. Um, so the intention was later this year. Uh, hopefully it will be. Uh, otherwise, top of next, I would imagine. We're basically out of time. I was going to jump back into Magpie, but I really want to say on camera, like I thought you guys did such a great job with this, and I really can't wait for the audience to see the third act. No. Uh, I can't say more. Surprised? Uh, yes, I, I, I don't want to say too much on yeah. camera, but I, um, uh, I'm very curious what people will think of you mm. and uh, everyone, and there's a lot I can't say until people have seen it. I, I really want to thank you all so much for coming in, for indulging my supercut question, for putting up with my individual questions, and I really wish you guys nothing but the best for more South by Southwest interviews on Collider. Uh, you know, refresh the homepage or go to another, you know, YouTube video or et cetera. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you guys. Yeah.